Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I love the sound of you guys enjoying each other's company, and it does sound like you are. Uh, we have a special service for you today. You'll see as, uh, as time goes on, but um, I'm looking forward to it. Let me, let me just begin by sharing a few announcements before we get into everything. I just wanted to remind you of a few things. Uh, Saturday, March 25th, is going to be our cabin fever day, so keep that in mind. It'll be here at church from um, 3 to 7, and uh, we're going to have pizza and pop and stuff like that, but we're going to have a lot of games out, and we'll just enjoy each other's uh, presence. So uh, keep that in mind for Saturday, March 25th. And, uh, oh, we're also doing a white elephant gift exchange. We've done that before. You know what a white elephant is, right? It means you bring gifts. But don't bring good gifts, or you're going to be so, you're going to be disappointed with what you get. It's uh, it's more of just a fun uh, ha ha time. So keep that in mind. Uh, Saturday, March 25th, and then uh, ladies, your next ladies book study is uh, April 1st, and Lynn has questions out on the uh, tables. Uh, they won't be out there today because of the dinner, but if you need them, see her and she'll get those for you. And then uh, Lynn has the uh, ladies' getaway planned, and it is going to be April 24th through 26th. I believe that's a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday. And if you need more details, see her, and she's in the process of uh, getting that uh, put together. If you haven't let her know yet that you're coming, it's probably too late because we've only got room for so many. But uh, you can see Lynn about that, and uh, we'll take care of those things. Uh, let me see here. I believe that's all of our announcements that I need to make at this point in time. Uh, it is. I've got a few prayer requests here. Just remember to pray for each other. Uh, I know in a couple of weeks, Carl and Angie are heading down to Cleveland Clinic. Angie's got some uh, tests uh, going on down there, so pray for them. And uh, pray for each other with other things as well. I think most of you know what those things are. So uh, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get started with our service. Father, thank you. For allowing us to be here together today. Uh, Lord, we uh, want to encourage each other and we want to bring honor to you. And I pray that that would happen uh, in, in, with both of those things today. Uh, may your spirit be at work and uh, may you uh, help each one of us uh, to follow you as we walk down this path together. I'm praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, turn in your hymnals, please, to hymn number 546. 546, let's sing this song together, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. Now, I picked this song because it's talking about a story. We've got a story, and we're going to be looking at our story today as we go. But let's sing this one together, 546, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Now he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing. so thankful that Donna's willing to play the clavinova and uh, you all know that if you're doing something like that you're putting yourself out there because everyone knows it but we appreciate it thank you very much Donna I do appreciate it uh, turn in your Bibles if you would please to Romans chapter 16 and as you do that I was thinking about this this morning um, I was looking out our window we have bird feeders and I was looking out our, our, our uh, windows this morning 
And all the birds, we're starting to get some of our springtime birds back. I haven't gotten any robins yet, but uh, earlier this week, our red-winged blackbirds showed up. Uh, they've been gone all way. So they're there. We've had a bunch of them at the feeders, and, and I like them. They've got a pretty sound to them. I like them much better than blue jays. But uh, today, we noticed that our evening gross beaks are back. And normally we have a pair, maybe four of them, but we probably had 15 or 16 of them out there this morning. And they are so beautiful. You know, they've got their head looks like they're wearing a Michigan football helmet. They've got uh, th those marks on their heads like that. But they were pretty. Wouldn't you like to know where those birds have been? Wouldn't it be neat if you could attach a camera to one of their backs and follow it all winter long, wherever it goes down to and what it does down there? And then when they come back, uh, it would be neat to see. They have a story. Well, I point that out because we have a story as well. Heritage Baptist Church has a story. We're going to be kind of going through that story uh, this morning. Each one of you have a story with how the Lord allowed you to get associated with our church, how the Lord allowed you to find out about us and then come and, and then be here with us. And uh, we're going to be listening to some of those stories today. But before we do that, I want to show you that I think this is a biblical idea. If you're in Romans chapter 16... Let me just read a couple verses, beginning at verse 1. He says here, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Synchria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for, uh, for my life. And he goes on, he says, they've even got a, a, how, a church meeting in their house. He's uh, down in verse 5, he says, Greet my beloved Epen Eponidas, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, and he keeps going, and he lists a whole bunch of people. Well, I, I went through this, and I kind of listed who some of these people are. Because they, they either make up the church in Rome or they make up other churches that are associated with the church in Rome. And, and we need to remember that this isn't just a story about the apostles going and starting churches and, and that we're just counting numbers of churches. This is about people, about individuals. And they all make that up. He started with Phoebe. Phoebe wasn't from the church in Rome. She was apparently from the church in Syncria, which is a uh, church near Corinth. And some people believe that the Corinthian church may have actually started the church over in Syncria. They're just a short ways away from there. But apparently she was a businesswoman. She was on business. And we think that maybe Paul uh, gave her the letter to the church at Rome to deliver. And that's why he's commending her to the church. She actually brought the letter there. And uh, he mentions that she's a fellow servant. He mentions Aquila and Priscilla. If you remember them, they're the ones that, they're in the book of Acts several times, and they were tent makers along with Paul, and they had to travel around for different reasons. They were in Corinth when the church was started there. Now, apparently, they're in Rome, and they have a church that meets in their house. You realize, don't you, that when Paul writes the letter to the Romans church, it wasn't one church building. It was a number of churches. A lot of them were house churches. Uh, some of them were maybe a little bit bigger, some smaller, but uh, they had one of them meeting in their house. He mentions Eponidas. And he says he's the first fruits of Achaia, or maybe your translation the first says the first fruits of Asia, which would be Asia Minor, which today is Turkey. That's where Paul did a lot of his traveling. And by saying he's the first fruits, uh, he was one of the first believers in that area. And now he's in Rome. He mentions Mary. This is not Jesus' mother, Mary. Mary was a common name back then. But apparently Mary was someone who, when Paul was in Rome ministering, uh, she uh, put him up in their house and took care of them. She seemed to be a hostess of somehow, but was a believer there that was willing to care for them. He mentions Andronicus and Junia. We think they were probably a married couple. They were a married couple that because of their faith, they ended up in jail. And they may have been in jail near Paul when Paul was in jail there as well, but they were early believers. He mentions uh, Amplius who we think was probably a servant in the emperor's household. Uh, several of the names that he mentions here are actually households that were associated with the emperor and with other uh, political leaders there in Rome. And it just shows that the church was reaching people uh, from all different areas. Uh, he mentions uh, Urbanus, and he mentions Stakes. Stakes is an interesting one because that name means ear of corn. Why would you call someone ear of corn? But what I think is, is he probably was a farmer or born into a farming family, and he has the unfortunate uh, uh, 
unfortunate fortune of being placed in a city. Uh, but at any rate, he's a, he's a farmer there, I, I would think. Um, he mentions um, Aristobulus, who um, some historians believe he was a brother of Herod Agrippa, who was king back in Israel. Um, he mentions uh, uh, other people. He mentions Herodian, who was either a Jew or possibly even one of Paul's relatives. And so he's just mentioning all these people. Here's one that I found interesting. He mentions Tryphena and Tryphosa. Those are two girl names. And the idea seems to be that probably they were twins, and they were twin sisters. And uh, their names mean delicate and dainty. And I, I just couldn't help but remember there's an I Love Lucy episode where they're traveling, and Ernest T. Or Ernest T. Ford, was, do I have that name right, was, was with them, and he introduced them to a couple girls named Weensy and Teensy, and they were not dainty and delicate, but they were twins. At any rate, no, he mentions these, and he says that they were servants of the Lord there, uh, and he mentions several others. He mentions a lady named Persis, who, by the way, he mentions it, and there's different things about it being in past tense. It sounds like she was an older believer, an older lady, and she was from Persia, so they're from all over the place. He mentions Rufus. Rufus is an interesting one because it's believed that he was the son of Simon of Cyrene who carried Jesus' cross. And what makes this kind of interesting is Paul wrote Romans earlier on, and he mentions Rufus. Mark later wrote the Gospel of Mark, and he's the one that tells the story of Simon of Cyrene. Well, Mark was writing from Rome and apparently was writing for the Gentile believers there in Rome. And he's given the backstory as to here's, here's Rufus' story and why we remember him and so forth. But he became a believer and probably became a believer because of his association with Christ on that day that his father had to carry the cross for him. So it's just a lot of interesting stories. I think this makes the church at Rome interesting. You can see there's lots of other people here that I haven't mentioned. But we all have a story. God works in all of our lives in different ways. And what we wanted to do today is I'm going to have several people come up and share how the Lord allowed them to become associated with our church. And so forth. We're, it's, we're not necessarily sharing salvation testimonies, but we're sharing about how uh, different ones of us became associated with the church. And uh, many of you, those of you who are going to be involved, I gave you this list to share when you're supposed to be there. Uh, don't wait for me to introduce you when it's time to come up. Just come up. Now, I've asked them all to share three minutes or so. And uh, if you start going over three minutes, I may have to walk up here and... You know, because uh, we could go until 3 o'clock this afternoon, and I know that all of your stories uh, could, could be an hour each, uh, and it's interesting, but I, we just want to give a taste of how God has worked in our lives and so forth. We're going to begin with uh, two of the first families from our church. Uh, they were here before Lynn and I came. They were some of the earliest members of the church. We're going to start with Carl and Angie, and then Carl and Marge after that. So Carl and Angie. Uh, by the way, let me say this as they're coming up. If you're coming to share, we really need you to come up here and share because we have the microphone up here that, that records it on the camera. If you stand down in front and share, we're not going to hear you. We might see you on the tape, but you'll just be a, a moving mouth. So we really need you to come up here and share up here if you would. We didn't practice anything. so <laughs> I brought her along so she could fill in when I forget. <laughs> so it might be an hour. But, uh, yeah, we started, we, we came up here in uh, 1984, Ange and I and our family moved up here to work in the Grayling Police Department. Um, we started going to a different church. We went to that church probably a little over a year, and uh, a group of people broke off um, because we weren't agreeing with what the pastor was how the pastor was leading the church. And the church actually, when it broke off, it went to start to meet in a, uh, in a family's home. It was called, the, they were, that was the Lavericks. And uh, it, got, it got pretty big for their house. So they ended up moving into the high school gym, or high school music room. And we'd set up, we started going there probably six months. I believe it, oh. After the church started? Oh, us? Yeah. No, 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 it was way sooner than that. Okay. It was, it was, we, okay, the first Sunday was um, in March, because this is when we celebrate, 
and then we started going, I'm reasonably certain, <laughs> the, the Sunday following Mother's Day. So it was you know, a few weeks that, uh, that we, because we lost our Sunday school teacher and most of the people that we hung around with <laughs> in church, you know, you do kind of flow to certain ones and, and uh, yeah, so it was probably, I'm not sure how many weeks yeah, exactly. Okay. Whatever Mother's Day was in 1986. Yeah. <laughs> so then we uh, met in the church or in the in the school school band room for probably a couple of years. Yeah. And started putting money away. And when uh, we finally got, I believe, about half the money we needed for the building, we started the building project. Our pastor at that time was Jim Van Leer, and he was the first pastor we had. And uh, he, he guided us through a building project. He was very good at doing that kind of thing. And uh, he also originally was a, a, a missionary through Continental Baptist Missions. And uh, he, to pastor our church, he dropped out of the mission and came here. And uh, Randy found this piece of property, and we purchased it. And then when we got about half of what we needed, we started building this church. We and do have pictures. Yep. Uh, many we, of you have probably seen the pictures of the groundbreaking and so forth. And we've had. Do you have them here? I, did we bring anything? No. I don't know if we have them here now. I thought there would be some around. But anyways. I actually do have a ton of pictures in my office. Yeah. I'll set out on the table. Oh, cool. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah, we recognize got, the, us. got the church built and uh, we didn't have quite a half, quite have it finished when we had our first service in here. We didn't have the carpet in here and they were still working on the drywall and stuff like that. But then we moved out of the school and started the church in here. So been here ever since. No regrets. You get to put up with me because Marge isn't comfortable with the steps. So. Well, Carol and Angie came in April of 86. We actually showed up in the summer, uh, roughly, of 86. Uh, and when he was talking about the way the previous church had been run, that's where we were going to. I had actually been involved with that church in 1972 uh, when I was up here between uh, college and seminary. And... Uh, so when we came up here, we started going there. Well, things started going downhill uh, when Marge heard a particular person, and I will not say who it was, pray for the death, literally pray for the death of a Supreme Court member. And shortly after that, uh, the pastor of the church brought one of the members who had left the church up for discipline, and what really got to me was the testimony was on the basis of one witness. And what does scripture say? On the basis of two or three. Uh, but he was going to continue with this despite the fact that only one witness was going to come forward. That was kind of the last straw. So uh, in the summer of 86, uh, we started going by then. You guys had all moved over to the uh, band room at the high school and that's where we wound up going and staying and we've been here ever since. Uh, I do think however, uh, and, and I'm glad Bob brought it to our attention this morning, but when we got here I think Carl DeVries first job was chipping the third copy of the Ten Commandments in stone so we could put them down here. <laughs> at least there are times it feels like it's been that long that we've all been here. But no regrets for having been here. This, is, this has been a great place to be and a great group of people. Uh, and even though the people have obviously changed over the years uh, so that there are only a couple of families who are relatively uh, older as far as the starting of the church, you are a great group of people. We're, we're happy to be here. Older, What's that? Just plain older? Yes. <laughs> 
Now, we did discuss the idea that we're, we're, not here to make, we're not here to make anyone look bad, but history is history. And so they were, they were sharing some of those things. And uh, it was then after that that the church got going, and we'll share more of that with you as time goes on. Let's sing another song together. This is Before the Throne of God Above. We're going to sing several songs throughout the day today. <laughs> share my story real quick because this is about where we came in my family story Lynn and uh, Whitney and I um, Lynn and Whitney and I had been with a mission agency before we came here we were with uh, ABWE the Association of Baptists for World Evangelism and we were trying to raise support to do a church planting ministry up in the New England states and we were working with another couple we were going to go up into the state of Maine actually and we were looking at the city of Portland or one of the suburbs around there to try to plant a church and uh, we, we had spent uh, between four and five years trying to raise support, and the support just wasn't coming. Uh, churches that we already had relationships with had been supporting us, but we just weren't bringing on new churches. So by 1995, in the spring of 95, we had come to the conclusion that while the Lord had us doing that ministry and we were glad to be doing it, uh, it was also the time that he was moving us on to somewhere else. So we were out in New York at the time and we were going to be moving back here to Michigan. And it was at that time that we got contacted from a friend of Heritage Baptist here, a man that lived up in the UP that was uh, friends with the former pastor and his wife. And he said, look, that pastor had a heart attack in the pulpit one day and uh, he can't come back yet. They're still waiting for his health to regain. So uh, I know that they're looking for a, um, a, someone to fill pulpits for a while. So as we came back, we got in contact with them and they said, yeah, come on out and do this. We're living down in McBain and we would drive up on uh, Sunday morning. Sometimes we came up on Saturday night. We actually slept in the nursery a couple different times. But uh, we came up and I was filling pulpits throughout the fall. Well, then when they, they finally come to the conclusion that Pastor Van Leer's health was not going to improve, he just couldn't get out in public. Whenever he did, his defibrillator was going off, and he was just really struggling. So uh, they were ready to retire, and the church asked us if we would stay. And um, our first official day here was January 1st of 1996. So uh, that, that was when the church was almost 10 years old. And uh, we started in. We've been here ever since, and uh, we have enjoyed it. Whitney was six years old when we started. You should see some of the pictures of her. And, uh, but but we, we enjoyed that. In fact, a bit of trivia. The first person ever baptized in our baptistry here was Whitney. So, yeah, so, uh, and, and I got to be able to baptize her, so that was quite a, a privilege as well. But uh, we've been here ever since. Uh, there's been a lot more to that story, and uh, we've, we've been enjoying our time here, but it's, it's been good being a part 
of uh, Heritage Baptist Church. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to sing one more song and then move on to uh, our next group of people sharing their testimony. Let's sing The Wonderful Cross. going to skip a couple songs as we go. I just wanted to let you guys know in advance because uh, um, I didn't know how much time this would take, but I don't want us to go till 1.30 uh, with the service, and I've got plenty of songs planned. But at this point, Donna is going to come and share. In 1983, my husband brought me up here to Grayling. We moved to Grayling. <clears throat> I was a young Christian of only five years, and so I, I kind of left everything behind. But we got into a business, and other things happened, and for nine years, I was unable to come to church. But I knew that God didn't bring me to the wilderness to die. So I prayed, of course, and just would let him know how lonely I was. So my son was going with a young lady at that time, and they came to this church. And he come home and he said, 
Mom, you got to go to that church. You'll love it. And so, of course, I conferred with my husband and asked if I could come. And he said yes. So God opened the door for me to be able to come to church and this church. And the minute I walked in the door, I knew that this was home, that this was God orchestrated, and this is where I was to be. And to this day, I feel the same, if not more, because I not only have good biblical teaching and a wonderful church, but a wonderful church family that I am a part of and a part of what God is doing, and I'm very grateful. And that's been 26 years, by the way. Um, Kim and I grew up in Metro Detroit, and we were attending for several years a very good church down there. And not only that, but that church had close association with uh, other very good churches, too. And, and so um, when we uh, wound up moving up here in either late 2000 or early 2001, I'm not sure. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, so looking for a church was a priority for us, and, and um, uh, we weren't going to go just to any church. And, and quite frankly, we, from, from Gaylord to Houghton Lake, and from Grayling through Kalkaska to Traverse City, we either went to or talked on the phone to every Baptist or Bible church in in those communities, and uh, it, it got to the point. I wondered if we were going to have to start a church, which I didn't want to do. I, I mean, we were really <laughs> but there. There just wasn't anything. We were speaking. really specific on what we yeah. were looking for. So anyway, um, I was talking to the the pastor, or Kim and I were talking to the pastor at Higgins Lake. Baptist Church, who was ready to leave that church, and and he was telling us that I really think Heritage Baptist Church is the church that you would want to uh, that would that would meet your needs, and um, uh, and we told him we actually had one church tell us because I had asked about this church, and and uh, a pastor at another church said, oh well they're. They're pretty liberal, that church out on Hartwood Pines Road. And, and so it, that it turned us off. We, we, didn't, we never considered this church. But Dean Cathcart, the pastor who was, who was leaving Higgins Lake Baptist Church, told us, Paul, Kim, I, I really think you should try this church. So Kim and I talked about it, and we said, well, you know, maybe, maybe we got some bad information or something. And, you know, and it was, it was disheartening to go to different churches. And, you know, Paul, I talked to him on the phone, and it sounded like a pretty good church. So we would go to, you know, to check out the church to be kind of, well, sometimes very disappointed. And sometimes it's like, oh, okay, this, this is not what we're looking for. Um, red flags were popping up or whatever. So the, the thing that we did, because we, we had tried and thought about so many different churches was to make the phone calls. So, so, um, <laughs> so I remember it was a Saturday, and and I called up the pastor, and I started talking to him, and I was asking him all kinds of questions and and stuff. And as we were talking, I was getting really excited because I was really liking the answers he he gave me. And and when I when I'm talking on the phone and I'm really excited about something. I, I pace around, yeah. and Kim's just watching me going across the room, <laughs> across the room. And he was smiling. This is a good sign. <laughs> and, and we're talking for about 20 minutes, and, and Pastor says, he cuts me off, and he says, you know, i got to tell you something. He says, I've never had anybody call me up and question me the way you have. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I've called up and questioned a lot of pastors over the last few months, 
and so far you're giving me by far the best answer. So let's just go on for a little bit more. And we talked for another 10 minutes or so. So we came to Sunday school the next day, and I remember we had different pews, and there was more room on the sides, and we had some long tables set up, and that's where Carl Schreiner was teaching Sunday school. And we walked in, and we sat down, and Carl Schreiner makes a Carl joke or a Carl comment. And we, re you know, Kim and I were like, ooh, gauntlet. And so we, res we responded back with, with a Carl-type joke or response, and, and, and it just went back and forth for a while. And, uh, and, but that's... So you see, this has been a part of our history. <laughs> That's, that's just, though, the, the, the ease of, that we had of just coming in and, and um, uh, relating with the folks here and everything. And, and we've been super thrilled over the years with pastor's leadership and the, the good people that we have here. So we're really happy to be here. Bob, we're going to skip this next song. And so uh, the Greens are going to come up here in just a moment. How I always date Paul and Kim's uh, phone call to me was it was right after 9-11. Because uh, they, they had called right after 9-11. And, and I remember that because Lynn and I were ready to go. We were leaving on a trip to go to Maine. And, and we had all kinds of problems because you couldn't go through Canada. And you couldn't, there were other issues going on. But I remember when we were on that trip, we discussed that phone call a lot when we're out going out there and coming back. And so that's how I remember that. But that, that gives you an idea of the, of the time frame there. So when you think of disasters, you think of <laughs> when, I, when I think of the Twin Towers, I think of Paul and Kim. No, at any rate. But uh, it's been good having them here. And then now we're going to start getting into some of the folks who, as the years they're progressing on, some of the newer families that are here. And we'll go with the Greens right now. Janet and I moved up to uh, this area in 2000, and uh, it wasn't clear to us then, but right after we moved up here, this, the Lord started working and bringing, uh, bringing us to Heritage. Um, I met Pastor in about 2001 or 2002, um, working at Maple Forest Township on the Planning Commission, and uh, Pastor was on the commission with me, and uh, also I think you were running for uh, township uh, board member at the time. <coughs> in 2003, um, <coughs> I was working at the Gaylord Post, and I got a phone call that my brother-in-law had been involved in a, in a bad car accident. Um, I drove down to Grayling, and Pastor was the chaplain on duty at the hospital that night, and uh, my brother-in-law passed away. And the pastor was with me when I went to my sister and told her that her husband had been killed. Um, <clears throat> fast forward a year or two, maybe three, Janet said, uh, <clears throat> I want to start going to church. And I said, well, if we do, I'd like to try Heritage Baptist. <clears throat> and we talked about it for a while, and back and forth. And... Um, <clears throat> We were, we were discussing it, and the way she said it to me at the first, I thought that, you know, there was something, something going on with her that, I, you know, I asked her, I said, what's going on, are you sick? Um, you know, thinking that, that she was dying, that, that, you know, and it just, it struck me that, you know, and, and she said, no, I just want to start going back to church. And I said, well, if we do, I want to go to Heritage Baptist. And so we discussed it, and when we walked in the door. Go ahead. You said, I want to go to Pastor Wagner's church. Yeah, I said, I want to go to Pastor, yeah. Pastor Wagner's church. So when we walked in the door, um, the only ones we knew were Pastor and Lynn. Um, I knew Carl and Carl from, from working with them, but I didn't, we didn't know them that well. But when we walked in the door, we were treated like family from the minute we walked in the door. Mm -hmm. And you know, we both said, this is, if, you know, this is the church that we belong at. And uh, I really believe that from the time we got here, the Lord was working to bring us here.
Good morning. It's so nice to be up here listening to the uh, silence as we do at home when we're sitting and we should be listening after we've asked the Lord for something. While I've been a Christian, I stayed since the day I was born, because, but we all know we have to be a certain age before we mention and ask Jesus to come into our life. But I was raised by a family, including relatives, that taught me at an early age that Jesus was my Savior. My mother one time, I mean, I'm leaning up to my three minutes, and uh, he, uh, uh, train loss. Um, one time we lived in the country about a block or a little over a block from a railroad base uh, track. And knowing that uh, back then, I'm only 48, uh, but way back then there used to be what they called railroad bums. Well, this one day, and this is just going back to show my history of loving the good Lord, there was one of the hobo bums that came off the road, uh, one of the train uh, booths or whatever, cars, came up to our place for a drink of water. So my mom went in the house, got him a glass of water, gave it to him, she was ridiculed by many people for doing such a thing because of what he stood for back then. And she looked at him, at the person complaining to her about this, that you never know when it's Jesus there asking for that drink of water. So. I just was not going to deny that that was not him, that it was a test. So that's the basis of my being a Christian. However, in 1997 to 1998, I moved up here, raised a solid Lutheran boy. You go to church in those fancy, yeah, we have fancy uh, churches and all the ritual and all that. But I did have a few ministers during that length of time of my lifetime that did teach from the Bible. And granted, a lot of it still had some of the rituals and all that. And then there were other ministers that really didn't seem to fill my needs. So I kept looking. But 1997, about five years after my husband passed away, I moved up here. My, brother, uh, my son had me move up here. I lived right across the road from here in that trailer park for a whole solid year. But did I come here? Oh, no. I'm a Lutheran. I go down the road to Mount Hope for that solid year. And I'm thinking, you know, they say the Lord, or God's the a potter, and he shapes us, molds us. Well, from that length of time till I came up here, when my daughter found me a house, because both my son lived up here, well, he lived up here the time that I had lived up before. Now my daughter and son-in-law moved up here. Okay, well, if you want me to move up there, I finally got tired of them talking. Lead me up there, or find me a house. Within two weeks, I had a house. Okay, well, Lord, but I say in the length of time, from the time I lived up there, the Lord had a lot of chipping away, molding me, taking me to the different churches, listening, trying to grasp, Really, who was this Jesus that I loved? Who was this God that took care of me, that
that I am a child of his. Of course, as a baby, you know, Lutheran, you're baptized, and but just, you know, a sprinkle of water here. And, uh, but then I met a friend. She worked with my daughter for a few years, and about three or four years before I moved up here, the credit union always had a little, for their group, had a little Christmas party. I hope I'm not going over three minutes. Um, but uh, I met this lady because her husband didn't care to go to uh, any of the functions of that nature. So my daughter said to this beautiful lady, Donna, Mom's coming up. She can be your partner. So every Christmas for about three or four years, Donna and I became very good friends. Such a Christian lady. I didn't know what church she went to. She didn't know what church I went to. But after I moved up here in March of 2009, I did go to church with my daughter and son-in-law. But all of a sudden, they quit. So I had no place to go. So I was listening to some of those uh, television ministers trying to get out of it what I wanted. I've got an emotional book in almost every room in my house, and I'd be reading it and reading my Bible. Well. Christmas of 2009, Donna and I were sitting on the step that goes down to the living room area where the party was that day, and we were talking, and she says to me, are you going to church? No. And it didn't, really, it didn't upset me that she had asked. It was just a simple Christian-like question. So I said, no. And her face instantly glue, I mean, shined. But at the same time, an unbelievable look on her face because she did know I was a Christian. So she said to me, would you like to go to my church? And there was no hesitation in my voice. I said, sure. So the very first Sunday in January of 2010, I walked through that door. Donna had picked me up. I walked through that door. I cannot tell you that there was even three or four people I only made a couple of steps in here. I don't see all the decoration. I don't see all the fanciness. But you know, in my heart, if you go outside now and then come in, you get cold and you come in and you feel the warmth. When I walked through that door, I felt a warmth come over me unbelievable warmth, warmth that I knew I was home. God had chipped away on me, molded me. He did a lot of chipping, almost 100 pounds. But I didn't have to take, come even onto the carpeting to know I was home. This is where the Lord had wanted me. And I'm, uh-oh. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just here to help you. <laughs> oh, just to help. I appreciate that. But, and such friendly. I have never been in a church in all the different ones I went to. There's always a little click here, a little click there. A little, everybody, there's not one Christian brother or sister in this congregation that will not do something for somebody else that needs it. I just thank the Lord every day that I have such a beautiful, beautiful Christian family.
Thank you. Amen. All right. We're glad to have her here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. First of all, I'm going to ask you if you will pray for my granddaughter. It's Rich's um, stepdaughter and Beth's daughter. She's going to have major surgery on Wednesday. And it is following the other surgery that was major. This is a follow-up. And it's pretty intense. So I'd appreciate it if you'd pray for her. What's her first name? Christy. Yep. Anyway, you know, Rich lives up here. And he's the youngest. So he's in charge of me. <laughs> I feel sorry for him, really. But I was living in Essexville in November 2011. I had surgery to remove a lump in my upper right chest and they found out cancer cells were too numerous to count. So December 2011 they had to take out more and I had a drain so I stayed up here with Rich and Beth because he was my nurse. And the doctor said he saw a tumor over my esophagus and my heart and he couldn't do that because it takes a special surgeon for that one. And they did more tests, PET scan, and showed the cancer in many different areas. So I was told I have four-stage breast cancer. So I said, okay, this is the way I'm going out, so that's the way it is. And I had, um, I don't know how many chemo treatments, but they were all powerful that they could give me. And I stayed with Rich and Beth when I had to have the chemo treatments. And I was not allowed to go home unless he asked, did you take a pain pill? So I said, no, he said, you can go home. Okay, so I told him I will not have any more surgeries. I don't care what's going on because when I leave, I'm going with this body. They're not gonna cut it up. And he says to me, all we ask is that they give us give me quality of life. I said, yep. And when I was up here, Lynn <laughs> kept checking up on me to see how I was doing. And I, I believe I had come here a few times before. Didn't I come here a few times when I was up here? I think I did. And I'm going, wow, okay, you know. This is the only church I have ever felt like being home. And there's so much love and family. And I couldn't believe it. But I, I would come here when I was up here. And then when I was in 2012, I was going home and driving through Bay City in Essexville. I'm looking around and I'm going, I don't know where I am, but I know it's Bay City in Essexville. Essex going, okay, Lord, here we go again. I'm supposed to move. And when I came back up here, Rich says, you know, I think it's time for you to decide which of us you want to live by. Well, of course, I'm doing cancer treatment, so I chose here. And then we, Beth and I looked for a place. I got moved up here December 28th of 2012. And... Now that this is 2023, cancer has not been active for a couple of years, but I'm still being treated a pill a day and two shots every four weeks to keep the cancer quiet and not coming back because she said, when it comes back, it's gonna be full force. I said, oh. And the Lord had asked, actually brought me up here and it's really a loving church and I never felt that in any of the churches before. 
But I also found out not too long ago, Dr. Lou said that when the uh, surgeon did the last surgery, he could not get all of the cancer. So there was all of that cancer and a tumor over my heart and my esophagus. I think it was my second chemo treatment. This woman came in and I said, what did you have? And she said, surgery on a tumor over my esophagus and heart. He couldn't do anything, he closed me up. And it's taken a hard time to healing. I said, thank you, Lord, because I was not gonna go through any more surgeries, that's it. And I found out that that doctor couldn't get all the cancer, so it was in many different areas of the body. So the Lord's been very great. Thank you. Before you go, Lord, yep. let's pray for Christy real quick. Do you mind? Okay. Let's do that. Father, thank you uh, for Lois's story and how you worked in her life and, and even in, in her, her physical life uh, with the cancer. We're grateful for that. And Father, we, we do pray for uh, Christy right now as yes. she's uh, going into this surgery. We know she's been having some struggles for a while now. and We pray that you'd help the surgery to be successful and uh, help her to be able to come through this uh, well. And then we pray for Rich and Beth. It's got to be hard for them to be here when she's so far away. And uh, we just pray that you'd give them wisdom as far as traveling there and being with her if, if they're going to be able to. And uh, just uh, pray that you would uh, give them all safety. And, and uh, Lord, use this to draw them all closer to you. Help them to come to you for help and for comfort. I thank you, Lord. Help Lois as she uh, tries to be a testimony to them and a help to them. Bless them all the way around. I'm praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Yep. Beth went out there um, Friday, and she'll be there until the end of March. Let's sing one more song then, uh, Bob and, and uh, Donna, and then uh, we'll pick up from there. This one is A Servant's Heart. <laughs> Uh, we're going to skip the next song and just finish up with the last one, and we'll let our stories continue. I kind of have a story like Margaret. I was a diehard Lutheran. <laughs> um, but we met, I met Ernie, our pastor, at Frederick Elementary School. Um, I was working there at the time, and he was subbing in 96. So I got to know him really well, and um, then I got to know little bit, a little bit more. But then they moved out by us. They're just right around the corner. So we got closer in our friendship, and um, we weren't going to the church at the, at the time. Um, things had happened, and I was not happy. Yeah, with. I was a Baptist, 
He was Breeding, a Baptist. Breeding yeah. Baptist Church in yeah. Belleville, Michigan, where I come to know the Lord. <clears throat> and when I met Barb and we got married, I kind of being the good husband, <laughs> she was the Lutheran. So <laughs> that's what that's we did. That's <laughs> what we did. <laughs> that's what we did. Um, <laughs> then when we moved up here in yeah. 1980, I lost my job downstate and we moved up here. She was. She wanted to go to Mount Hope. So. Yeah, so we did, and we stayed there a while, and then we left and, and went to Trinity, and some things happened, and they were you know, pushing the Missouri Synod over everything else, and I thought, no, this is not right. That's not how I was raised. So we left. And I we didn't still, go to church. And I was still being a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> so... so um, then they moved out by us, and we got to know them better. And uh, finally, I forget when it was, probably about six years ago, Larry was working on the water heater, and the, fr the friend that was supposed to come and help him hadn't been there yet. So I got on the phone, and I called him. I didn't I know said, anything about this. He didn't know this. anything about this. And Larry kept saying, we need to go to church there. We need to go to church there. No, I, I just, I don't know. I just can't, I can't go from Lutheran to Baptist. There's just no way. So I called him. I said, can you come over and help Larry? I said, he's doing the water heater. He said, yeah, sure. So they talked, and, and that afternoon, Larry said, you know, we really, should, we really should go. So we did, and that was a little over five years ago. And like everybody said, you walk in that door. I mean, I knew some of you, Donna, and I knew Angie, and it was like I'd been here all my life. And we've been here ever since. We became members. I got baptized because I was baptized in, as an infant, and best thing we ever did. I wish we would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized as an infant. I was a Methodist. So yeah, but then you got baptized then again. Then I got baptized again when I came to seek the Lord. Yep. Except, uh, so here we are. Now we are here. <laughs> You're stuck with us. <laughs> So in 2018, we were faced with what I felt was a daunting task of finding a new church in Grayling. So I'm a list person, so I, I don't think I actually wrote it down, but I made a mental list of, um, let's see, we could try this one, I don't know, maybe over here, well, and then I thought about it, and I thought, who do I know? You know, who in my relationships do I know that's a Christian that goes to a church where I could you know, maybe connect with that person. Um, and I was thinking back, and I thought, well, I know that two of our substitutes at school, I know Mr. M and Mr. Wagner, I think they go to the same church, and they're really good guys. I could, I could go there, and at least I'd have some familiar faces. So I had to find out where they were at. And then I realized, wait a minute, they're the same people that do the Tuesday after school program. And every time I go by there, there's this amazing group of volunteers working with our kids and giving them snacks and teaching Bible stories. And there's this super smiley lady with white hair that I would see every time. It turned out to be Angie. And I thought, These, this, this could work. You know, I just need to find out where they're at. So I found out um, that it's Heritage Baptist. So I figured out where, where the church was. And um, about five years ago, I Tom, I said, you know, I, I feel like this is where we need to check, check out, you know, see if this might be a good fit for us. So he said, go ahead. So I went by myself, <laughs> and he might have been working or something, and I was kind of like the scout, and I came back and gave him a report, and he said, all right, I'll go with you. So we went, and we came back again, and each time <clears throat> I felt like I was waiting for something to change, like um, maybe we wouldn't be as welcomed or people wouldn't be as friendly or you know there's some something I'm missing there's got to be something it can't be this great all the time but every time we came back it was the same kindness um, humble people people that pray genuinely genuinely love the Lord and there's peace and that's what I need um, and every time pastor gives us a lesson it's the truth from the Bible. It's not his opinion. It's not some political statement. It's Bible truth. And that's what we need. So 
That's why we're here. By the way, their daughter needs you to pray for her as well. Katie just went and had some tests done, and they're waiting for biopsies and so forth. And uh, so uh, be praying for Katie as well. Yeah, you know, I never heard that part of the story. Um, we had our after-school program, and we, we did it for eight years. We ended up uh, stopping it. And we didn't draw any of those kids or their families to, to church. And I didn't realize that, that that had a little bit of part to play with Jill and Tom uh, coming here. So praise the Lord. Uh, that's, that's part of what the Lord does. So very good. Uh, we're going to skip the next song I had listed, and we're going to go right to Tony. My husband, Dave, and I, hi, Amelia, <laughs> um, we were saved in 1983 at um, Calvary Baptist Church in Kalkaska, which is where we lived at the time. We attended regularly. Years went on. We had three kids. Lives got busy. And our priorities, unfortunately, did not include attending church. And then my husband got his dream job in Grayling. So we had to move. So we moved to Grayling, uh, early 90s, and um, for a few years we were just carrying on with our lives. The Lord is still in our hearts though. And he said to me one day, he said, Tony, we need to find a church. I feel we have to go to church. I'm like, okay, honey, whatever. And uh, he said, but it has to be a pastor that preaches from the word. So Dave said, well, let's try this church. And we went a couple times, and it was okay. It was, it was okay. And then another church, and it, and it was okay. And then one time, we came here. And I don't know how Dave found it, but Dave, my husband, found this church. And we came, and then like everyone else that has said, so it was, it was family. And Pastor's sermon just touched our hearts like you wouldn't believe. Uh, we just felt God in his presence. And so we attended, and then my husband's health declined, and um, he couldn't come anymore. Um, and I thought, well, I can't go alone. So I didn't come to church either. About that time, um, my husband's nephew, or excuse me, his uh, first cousin, passed away from cancer, and he was the same age as my husband. We went to the funeral, and at the service, their pastor was saying, so many wonderful things about my husband's cousin and his wife and how they attended church and how they were such an amazing part of a church family. And I was just sitting there thinking, oh, I don't have a church family. I don't. So I felt the Holy Spirit just fill me. And I told my husband on the way home, I said, honey, I'm, I, I'm going back to church. And so I came back alone and I did it. And he, he still couldn't, but every time I came home from church, he'd say, how was the sermon? We'd sit and talk about it. And then at his memorial, um, a little over six months ago, pastor stood up, asked my church family and you all that came and said those wonderful things about Dave that, that I had wanted. And you guys filled a, a big hole. And I thank you for it. And I thank you. Good morning. I got to come to this church <laughs> due to my friends and not so much me. I, um, moved up here and I was going to a Baptist church downstate and I was really looking for another Baptist church to join. And <laughs> my friend who researches everything researched this church for me. And so I started watching it online. <laughs> and I, the first one I heard, it was like, oh, you guys gotta see this. And I was so excited. So I kept watching online and my friends finally said, cause I have social anxiety, we will go with you to this church and make sure that we find someone to take you under their wing. And so the Heavenly Father blessed me with Janet, <laughs> who's taken me under her wing. And I couldn't wait to meet Pastor to hear 
and see him face to face because his sermons were so good. In case you guys didn't know it, he's like a Max Lucado. He explains the Bible very, very well. And ever since I've come and Janet has helped me and everything, I haven't left, and so you guys are stuck with me too. And this is an awesome family. So thank you. And we're glad that you're here as well. She's one of the newest people uh, to uh, join our church. But uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Max Lucado. So, okay. <laughs> Interesting. No. no. Um, the reason we did this today is because we've all got a story. And, and by the way, I know that plenty of the rest of you have stories. I could have asked more of you to be able to uh, come up and share, and it'd be wonderful. Uh, maybe we need to take the time while we're eating lunch to ask the people around us how they got associated with our church somehow. Do you realize that our church dinners have had a part with some people coming? Uh, many of you remember Sandy Bainham. I remember the, one of the first times she came was for one of our dinners. In fact, we had tables up here. And I remember Sandy and her daughter were up here, and, and we sat up here with them and talked. And, and others, I think Jill said the first time you came was at dinner, right? So and so interesting. So All I remember is that there's good food at these dinners. And, and I'm looking forward to eating and spending time uh, with the rest of you. But, uh, but thank you for sharing. Uh, it's encouraging. The Lord's at work. Now, sometimes we can look around in our world, and, and, I, and I know that things have gotten worse in our world as time goes on. Jesus said that things would get worse and worse, didn't he? And so did other prophets and so forth. So we know that things get worse, but God is still at work. God still works in our lives. He still works in your life, and, uh, and he, he brings us together. We know we're not the only church here in, in our, our community that preaches the gospel, um, and, and, and that's good. We're, we're glad about that. We, we know that there's other good churches around, and the Lord directs other people there, but he's directed us here. And we're grateful to be a part of a family together and grateful to be able to uh, worship together and grateful to be able to encourage each other, spur each other on to follow him, and uh, we, we certainly need to be doing that. Let's sing this last song together. It's, Lord, I Need You. Father, we do need you. We know that, that uh, we can't do anything on our own. We know that we can't navigate this life on our own. We know that we can't accomplish uh, heavenly purposes on our own. We need you. And we pray that you would continue working in our lives. We pray that you'd continue working in uh, the life of Heritage Baptist Church. And Lord, we look forward to who the next people are uh, that you will bring to be a part of our church with us 
so that we can travel down this uh, journey of faith together. Thank you for that, Father. Uh, keep us looking up to you and help us to bring honor to you in all we do and say. I pray in this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us a few minutes, and then we'll have everything ready for dinner to begin. Thank you. You are